a couple of months ago, I added this wonderful 1993, I think, Elridge Peugeot 405 to my stable, to my car collection. I needed a car that I could use as a runaround, that I could throw stuff in, old tires, gearboxes, the dog, and not care. I had a bit of an incident recently with my wonderful BMW X5 where I spilled gearbox fluid all in the back of it. Used old gearbox fluid, oil, disgusting. It still smells now, <laughs> it's awful. But I have got this wonderful thing in my lineup and I thought after that incident, it's probably best that I send it through an MOT, see if it needs anything, get it running, get it taxed, get it insured. Happy days. We have a runner, and that's what we have today, boys. We've got a runner. Oh, hell yeah. I want to take you on this ride. Me and my Banganomics Peugeot 405, the most wonderful thing I've bought in the last few months. And uh, yeah, let's talk. How did it pass this MOT? The fun, the scary bits. Let's go. I picked this up, a few of you guys might have thought, wow, another baggish, another bag of absolute junk that's gonna get nowhere on this channel. Oh, how wrong were you? I, I agree, I, I, I thought the same. <laughs> when I picked it up, I thought, what am I doing? Why am I buying this thing? But I stand here today, proud, proud owner of Pierre the Peugeot 405. What did it need to get through an MOT? New set of window wipers and a headlight. That's all it needed. This majestic machine was complete with a ticket with just a change of those two things. Amazing. <laughs> now I actually bought this car as a non-runner. Yes, Pierre over here didn't actually work. I managed to fix it and I managed, and I believed, when I read the advert on eBay for this car, I just believed it wasn't gonna be a big problem. I was like, oh, I just, I'm bonding with this wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> Um, before I even had it, and I was I just want it. I know I want the car. I love it. I love how cool and old and retro it looks, and I just wanted it. So what 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 did, what did it take to fix it? A battery in the key. That's all it needed. Four quid from the local garage. I picked it up while I was driving up here the first time I had the car, and we got it working straight away. So happy days, happy days. Oh, also I did put a new battery on it because the old one needed jump starting all the time. But now she starts an absolute treat. She, it's a he, his name's Pierre, it's not a girl. So I did say at the beginning of this video, I wanted to run over a couple of things with you guys because this is a very cheap car. It's a, a sub 600 pound car now. After getting it through a ticket, MOT and everything, it still owes me less than 600 pound. And there are some consequences you have to deal with with a car like that. But I'll explain more of that when we take it for a drive. I want to show you a couple of little things that I've absolutely fallen in love with. But I need to put you around the front of the car for this so I can show you. You ready? Hey, look, starts first time. It does have a little, uh, a little exhaust blow. Just a little one. We're okay. Still works. Look where the washer jets come from. Ah! <laughs> That's so funny. Like, I don't know why I find that so entertaining, but I really like that the washer jets are attached to the window wipers. That's just so annoying when you like go like that. <laughs> I mean, I think it would have its uses if like an annoying Jehovah Witness was trying to sell you a book here. You could just be like, go away, be gone, demon, be gone. And they're gonna leave you alone, I guess, because that's annoying, because this is old washer fluid and it stinks. <laughs> Also, if you watched the first video when I got this, you guys would have seen the bonnet wouldn't shut. Well, it was just a bent bonnet latch. I even bought another fine bonnet hinge and I didn't need to use it in the end. So that was 20 pound wasted, but hey, you never know when you might need it. And she's now in there, so Pierre has a backup. God, I love you, Pierre. Oh, it's so cool. So while we exist through day eight of this hurricane, I thought what we'd do is we'd do the review, kind of owner review up on this, find out some of the more fun and scary things about it. So what we'll do is we'll chuck Finn in the boot because that's what I've got the vehicle for. We'll run him home and then we'll finish up the video because uh, I'm actually taking the Nissan to have some work done on it tomorrow at Northampton Motorsport, amazing place. I can't wait. And that video will be on the members section of my YouTube channel. If you fancy joining up, you get a lot more vlogs on the member section. And when we hit 50 members, we're gonna do a members only meet at the shop and it's gonna be sick and I can't wait. So let's hop in, let's go. Let's go for a little ride, shall we? Good man. What a wonderful machine we're in, eh? 
God, I hope you can see me okay, because we're using a new mount and everything. Probably should check. So, first ride with you guys and Pierre de Piaget. Pierre, Pierre, Pierre. Oui, oui. Comment ça va? Comme si, comme ça. Et toi? This video, if this video hits 5,000 views, I will learn a sentence of French, like proper, like something I don't know now. That's my deal to you, comrades. Let's go, baby. <laughs> so, the good, the bad of running a car like this. Okay, let's start with the best bits. Facts, yeah? Hard facts. It's cheap. It's really, really cheap. I don't need to put Shell V power in this. I don't need to, I don't need to worry about how, how good or bad fuel economy is. I don't need to worry about any of that. This is my runaround. This is my little banger, and I love it. Number two, the best thing about this whole car, Peugeot seats. These seats, guys, are the most comfortable seats in any car that isn't luxurious that I've ever driven in my life. Number three, it's funny. It's funny. It's just funny, it makes me laugh. I look at it and I'm like, that's just a funny, funny car. So I can't, I can't complain <laughs> at all. I, I look at it, we've called it Pierre. It's now got a name, which means I can't sell it. Yeah, anyway. Some bad things are the old and lots of stuff goes wrong on old cars. Obviously I've got it through an MOT, which is great. MOT is, is great news, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna last for very long. So it definitely could be belt snap and oil leaks and whatever else could come my way with this vehicle, but that's just something we'll put up with and what we will deal with if we have to cross that bridge. No, and other negatives, the stereo, it's old. It's really old. Um, it picks up the radio just about. I'm boring, I like listening to talk sport. Okay, here's a medium weight station. That doesn't really work ideally for me, but the biggest, biggest downfall to this car is just the safety of it. Um, being, a, being a car from the early 90s, we, we know for a fact this thing is not gonna survive well in a car crash. I hope, obviously, I never find that out, purely because I don't think I'll be around after it. Uh, when I first got it and I took it to work the first day after having it MIT'd and that, this car nearly rear-ended me. He was on his phone. I could see he was on his phone. I was stopped at a, a zebra crossing and he was just on his phone. And I literally was just like, we're going to jump the zebra crossing and mount the path just because I thought this guy was going to ram me in his Ford thing. The Ford like pumped up little car thing they have. So I think that's the big concern for me with this and why I won't use it every single day. Because number one, um, I just don't know how long it will last if I use it every day. And number two, I don't need to with the X5 uh, and I wouldn't want to risk the safety of, I mean, myself, I don't really care that much about, but my dog, I actually really do. Like, he's, he's like my son. So I just wouldn't risk my dog's existence for running around in this thing when we have the X5. But that's not to say anything bad about old Pierre over here. If any of you guys are out there and you're in need of an old car, this still does the same job that my X5 does. It gets me to A to B wonderfully. It's quirky, it's characteristic. It cost me less than 600 pound for this for a whole year. Insurance was 140 quid, fully comp. That's amazing, that's hilarious, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. And then you've also got fuel economy in it. I mean, I've run around in it lots. I don't know how many miles I've done. I think 100 and, I do know, I reset it, 119 miles and we've only done quarter of a tank. It is a 1.6 petrol, so it is, the slowest thing I've ever owned, but it's great and I love it. And I love how cheap everything is. A headlight was 20 quid. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't really win, especially when you deal with Nissan Silvias and Honda Civics and all the rest. This thing is just brilliant. It's a shame it's an automatic on one front because I'd love to be able to do some reverse to firsts in it. But at the same time, the automatic gearbox is smooth. <laughs> it's smooth, it's a smooth gearbox. I can't, I can't complain at all. I almost feel like it's a DCT with how fast it changes gears. Overall, man, the car is absolutely fantastic. It's so funny, it's cheap, it's great fun. What, like really, that's my granddad's dog. Who was that walking it? But overall, it's brilliant. And like I said, it does everything my, my X5 does, but just way more basic. But if you just need a runaround car, why not? And with the way the prices have gone for like Japanese stuff now, it's just absurd. And it's not justifiable for the most part, I don't believe. 
So you've got to look for other pl ways to get your kicks. And I like buying cars. I like, I like playing around with old cars. And if I can't afford the ones I want anymore, we have to look outside the box. And I saw this and I was like, wow, that looks super funny. So I was like, I bought it obviously, and I don't regret it at all. I love Pierre. Let me know what you guys think down below. Oh man, it does not, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't handle all that great. <laughs> She's a bit understeery, boy. And the, and, the, and the rear interior definitely needs resolving. The, head, the headlining needs resolving, but I just can't be bothered to work on the car at the moment. We will get to that at some point. And when we do, that'll all be posted on the members channel once. And if this does get fully modified, I will definitely do an update video for the main channel. But we're really heavily focusing on quality content on here now. So that will be where you see it in the, uh, in the members section. Come and be a part of the family. It's really fun. So there we have it, my first step in a Bangonomics in a very long time. The last time I had a car like this was my Honda Legend, and I bloody loved that thing. I think I loved it a bit more than this. Um, mainly down to the safety. I always felt absolutely fine driving that old Honda Legend around, and I did even have a crash in it, and it, it just damaged the side light. Whereas this, I just feel like it's going to fold at any given moment, and that is all concern, especially when I have a dog that I treat way too well, like a child, and buy cars just to run him around in. So, you know, it's great. It really is. I love this car a lot and I hope you guys like it too. Leave me a comment down below. What do you think? I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a little stop gap in between feature videos. We've got a load more planned, but the British weather hasn't been that kind to us over the last couple of weeks. I promise you, hit subscribe for more. And if you want vlogs, behind the scenes vlogs, meets and stuff like that, all exclusive to the members, sign up today, 199 baby. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time today, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.